Hello. You see, once upon a time, my name was Kweku Sinti Misa. My great-grandfather was the uh, moderator of the Presbyterian Church. That's my father's side. And then on my mother's side, there was Teofilo Zopoku, one of the first ordained black Basel mission uh, uh, priests. And then I became chief. And so you know me as Nanan Sakwa. And all through my life, I get asked the question, how can you be a Christian and be a traditional ruler at the same time? You slaughter sheep, you pour libation. It is all against Christianity. Then I found this book, The Old Customs, Stereotypes and Prejudices. And I read it and I thought, you know what? I need to speak to the author to answer all these questions so that when you see me and you ask me the questions, I'll have answers for you. And it was written by no other than the Archbishop Emeritus, Peter Akwesisapo, who wrote this book. And he's saying that you can't be Ghanaian, you can have your traditions, your belief, and still follow Christ. There's nothing wrong with that. This is going to be one of my personal and most emotional interviews I'm ever going to have. Welcome to PM Express Personality Profile. Hello and welcome back to the show. Now you see, if I say I am going to go through his credentials, by the time I'm done, I'll just be saying goodbye. At the age 37, he was a bishop of Kumasi. 37. He was literally the president of the Catholic mission in Kumasi. At that time, the stigma was rife. Infrastructure was low. And he got a call from Rome saying that at the time he will be Father Akwesisapo. Go to Kumasi and get it sorted. I'm talking to uh, the Bishop Emeritus, Archbishop Emeritus Akwesisapo. I've been waiting for this day for a very, very long time. Archbishop, I am very privileged very to be right. sat here with you today and discuss these issues. Now, this issue, I'm sure, even though I find it personal, I'm sure most of the viewers have battled with it for a long time. But before I get there, before I get there, there's something which... You see, I find you being a very traditionalist, uh, and obviously your parents would have been a traditionalist. Weren't your parents a bit worried if you say, look, I am going to become a Catholic priest? Because then obviously you have to swear to celibacy, and then you don't have children. And they're going to say, no, 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 you're not going down that route because I need grandchildren named after me. Did you go through that? Uh, interestingly, my mother was born a, a Catholic. Okay. In 1908. Okay. And, uh, and my father wasn't born a Catholic. Okay. He was born a traditionalist, uh -huh. as you call uh, him. But my mother's father was so staunch a Catholic that he wouldn't let his child, his daughter, married somebody who wasn't a Catholic himself. I see. <laughs> and so it happened that when my father and mother got married in 1924, both of them were Catholics. I see. Both, you know, my father had to become a Catholic before he could marry my mother. I see. And, uh, so they were married in 1924. And I was born in 1933, and I had a call to become a priest in 1943, 10 years after uh, my birth. So there was no problem from that angle. But for some reason, my mother wasn't very happy that I had decided to become a priest. The reason was very simple. You suffered terrible... Childbirth. Uh, childbirth. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the four he had, children, he had lost four children before you. Before I was born. Okay. okay. And uh, I had to stick to her like a tick. <laughs> uh, wherever she went, she took me along. But so uh, she wasn't very happy that I wanted to become a Catholic. Because that means you have to leave to go and study. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. But at the same time, we had this belief. That it is when a, a woman uh, uh, suffered from uh, childbirth, it is the same 
child that comes back. who goes and comes back. Mm -hmm. So my mother was afraid that if she refused the, my request to become a priest, I would be angry and go, go back. back. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, she gave in and I became... And, and my, as for my father, she had no problem at all. Okay. Only what he said was that I was too young at that age, 10 years old, to think of becoming a priest. Yeah, um, should, 10 years was, was young. Yeah. And uh, it was that time, 1943, that Asante, the Catholic Church in mm -hmm. Asante, had one, the first uh, Asante priest. Okay. And we had this doctor, to this uh, uh, teacher, who went to see the ordination of the first uh, Asante Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. But he came back <laughs> to describe the ceremony in graphic terms. Huh? That, you know, the, 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 whole, the cathedral was full, the man lay, lay down, and they were singing beautiful songs. The way he described it, I said, I want to be like that. That was all. Wow. Ah. Wow. Yeah. wow. I'm going to skip to 1959 when, you know, you become bishop. Because I know you are... 1959, I became a priest. You became a priest. Okay. 1970, I became, became a bishop. bishop. Yeah, so 1959, I became a priest. I yeah. remember my grandfather, Sinti Misa, telling me that, you know, when he also, I think he went to Germany to practice, and then back then he had to come with a ship to uh, Takrad, the steamer, they called it. And uh, the folks from Abumusu came there in lorry loads, you know, to meet him, and it was a grand celebration. And he says that, you know, he's not, he, he cannot see a happiest day like that day. I just want to recollect yours. Well... His experience is exactly like mine. I was ordained a priest in 1959. Mm -hmm. and I was appointed assistant priest at the, to the cathedral of uh, uh, St. Peter's mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, Kumasi. In 1961, my bishop asked me to go to Rome mm -hmm. to go and study. And I went in a ship. <laughs> Steamer, as you need to call it. And the first city outside Africa that I uh, ever saw or entered was Barcelona. Okay. Barcelona. And from there, we, we went to Genova, where I saw the most beautiful cemetery in the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. From there, we drove to Paris and London. But that's not, what, that's not mm -hmm. your question. So I spent two years studying in Rome, mm -hmm. where I got my degree in uh, theology. Yeah. And then I went to Oxford University, University to do social anthropology. That's where you met Kofu? Yes. <laughs> and he, was my, he was my school uh, university mate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Together with uh, people like Professor Hagan. Yeah. Uh -huh. Professor Chumasi, I don't know whether you know them. Yeah, I know yeah. the names. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Chumasi, Hagan, and so on. Okay, so in 1965 then, I took the ship again, this one from Liverpool to uh, 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 Tema. Uh, and uh, I, I met a, a rapturous uh, welcome wow. from my people. Wow. Uh, you know, I think that it had never happened. Uh, <laughs> and they said, although at that time I was the ninth uh, priest of uh, Ashanti. But at that time, when we said Ashanti, we meant now the, the Ashanti region and the current Ashanti region and uh, the, the division hadn't come yet? No, the division, okay. the division, the division came much later right. when. Uh, uh, Dr. Nkrumah, mm -hmm. he wanted to curb the power of the Ashanti. Ashanti. And so he created Bunahavo and took part of Ashanti, Ashanti. Ahavo and added it to Bunahavo Bun to make it Bunahavo. Bunahavo. Because Ahavo is pure Ashanti. Ashanti. Uh -huh. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> see. Now, at 37, I mean, were you not too young for that responsibility? Normally, I would have been considered too young. Why they chose me, I don't know. 
<laughs> you, you, you have the, uh, <coughs> the, the, the right vision and foresight. <coughs> you have the right vision and foresight for it, your beliefs and everything. But again, you said why you don't know. Weren't you worried that, you know, what am I going to do with this? No, in the, the, in the Catholic Church, we don't go by promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't go by promotion. It's like uh, in a civil uh, society, the president chooses whom he likes mm -hmm. to be Minister of Education, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and so on. The same thing obtains in the Catholic Church. The Pope chooses whom he likes to be Bishop, mm -hmm. and that's why I, I was chosen to be Bishop. Yeah. Well, yeah. you, did a, you, did, you did a good job. I, think, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think <laughs> it, nobody, that, nobody's uh, ever looked back. Yeah, it's not that you get promoted to... No, no, anybody can be... The bishop. Uh, like like, uh, like uh, Cardinal Texan. Yeah. Later on, he, he was my student. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. He was my student. But the Pope wanted him to become Cardinal. So he chose him. So, uh, I see, I see, uh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> now, uh, one thing I read about you, I think I find surprised, that you were secretary to a chapel. Secretary? That, that's right. I read somewhere that you, they, they offered you to be head of state. Oh, <laughs> when things were not going well politically mm -hmm. at all, not some people from Accra, mm -hmm. headed by the president of British Lamte was one of them. I see. Uh -huh. Headed by Amo. Okay. Uh, if I am Amo. Every Amo. Yes. They decided that unless we got a. a a God-fearing person to be head of state of Ghana, things will continue to go ill with the country. So they gathered themselves up and came to Kumasi to ask me to be head of state. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said, at least I would have one deterrent. You know, those head of states and those people in authority were not... They, 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 were doing, they were not they were doing what they liked because they didn't have the fear of the Lord oh. in them. But at least they could count on my uh, fear of the Lord. Not, not, not wanting to to offend the Lord in any way. Now so the they thought that was the answer to Ghana's problems. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> who's God fearing who, 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 who fear the Lord reverentially, mm -hmm. so much so that he wouldn't do anything to Offending. You see, the reason why I ask that question is, I know your principles of justice and peace. Yes. It's like everywhere you go, it's almost like if it goes in the door before you come, yes. it's justice and yes. peace. Yes. Is it because of something you suffered in childhood, some injustice, or were you a victim of it and decided that, you know what, I will make sure that nobody goes through that? I was born in the thick of the forest. Uh, you know, Shantis, or oh, you, you are mm. a, a, an Akan. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the Okurase. Yes. Uh, Okurase is some place no, which is not the city. Mm -hmm. But we have the Okurase of the Okurase. <laughs> uh, so I was born in that situation. Mm -hmm. An Okurase of Okurase. Mm. There I lived with uh, five fathers. You know, Akans. Your father's brother your father. is your father. Yes. First father was called Jinaye. He was a traditional priest. I see. Second one, uh, uh, Anthony Kumsen. He was a Catholic. My father was a Catholic blood uh, father. Then the next one was uh, a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And then the, the next one was inclined towards Islam. But he remained a traditionalist. Okay. okay. Later on, the first one who was a traditional priest became a very staunch Catholic. I see. And the fourth one, who was a very good Catholic, became a traditional priest. <laughs> uh, okay. And I lived in the forest. When people talk about um, poverty and uh, hunger and disease, I have suffered these things uh, myself, mm -hmm. personally, personally. Yeah. 
if you see the, 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 the building I called house and I was living in, you would be surprised. <laughs> I used to go, I knew how to trap animals. I walked barefooted to the forest and, and trapped rats and you name it. We went on communal fishing. We did this and did it in very severe uh, physical conditions. Mm-hmm. That, way, that was what we lived in. I, I told you that four of my siblings died. Yes. I didn't die. And the one after me also died. They had all kinds of diseases. Some of, them, some of which were easily curable. Mm-hmm. But they died. I got symptoms of all the diseases that killed my, my brothers and uh, sisters. Mm-hmm. You know, big abscess on my, on my, chest. On my chest, above the heart. Uh, if I were to show you, I won't show you. <laughs> <laughs> I could show you some, some scars on my body. I suffered from hookworm. I suffered from diphtheria. I suffered from this uh, disease, a kind of um, water collecting in the lungs. Wow. I suffered from all of them. So I knew poverty. poverty. At first hand, my father had five farms. I was a farmer even before I went. In one of the chapters in my book deals with uh, uh, what you call child, child labor. Child labor. Child labor. This is foolishness. Huh? We'll get. We'll, 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 we'll get. To. <laughs> if you are saying with your father, you swear you follow what your father is doing. You 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 come from you to call it child labor. So, so, so that, that's knew. why your principles of yeah. justice. And yeah, exactly. You see, when I became a bishop, I said I know how my people are suffering, and the amount of the people, at the amount of Europeans were paying for cocoa was ridiculous. I remember that my father told me that way back before I was born, the price of cocoa was so low that cocoa farmers decided not to sell it. They burnt their cocoa. Oh, wow. Yes, wow. it happened. And uh, so I had experienced all these things. This is your zeal for establishing schools. Yeah, and exactly, churches. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think it's been honorable because most I, people... When, have, I, when I'm talking about poverty and uh, disease and uh, hunger and uh, lack of good housing, bad road, I'm talking from experience. I'm talking from experience. Um, when I became... When I was in Oxford, uh, when I was at Oxford, uh, I wrote an article... For a very learned journal. One, one, let me, one of the 1,500 articles that I've written. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, this one wasn't published because I sent it to the, a very learned journal in uh, Cambridge, mm-hmm. uh, the, the editor of which was a very famous anthropo- anthropologist, mm-hmm. uh, Professor Ford. He wrote back to me that... Uh, Oh, I should realize that uh, on that topic, the Ashanti conception of the human person, on that topic, some pe- many people had written. Uh, Rattray had written on it. This had written on it, that. And unless I took into account the, uh, the opinions and the expressions of uh, confidence of these people, they wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't uh, uh, publish my article. So my article wasn't published. Because I wasn't going to quote somebody Body. writing about when I'm writing when I'm about my own people. Bishop, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break. And then when I come back, yes. we are talking about old customs, stereotypes, and prejudices. <laughs> and I am living it. So we're going to have a good conversation about that. Stay tuned. We're coming straight back. Hello and welcome back. As you know, I am speaking to the Archbishop Emeritus Akwesi Sapo. Now, he's written a book called The Old Customs. Uh, but before, if you've just tuned in, we've talked about how the mother lost four children before he came. Uh, 
mom got very close to son, did not even want the son to go to school because, you know, she wanted to protect his boy. This son must survive. But somehow, uh, he managed to go to school, became uh, a priest, a father, you know, a bishop, an archbishop, written over 26 books, over 1,500 journals, has served on numerous councils, uh, and his motive has been justice and peace. And wherever he's gone, he's stamped his authority that there must be justice and there must be peace. But his latest book to come out is Odd Customs, uh, Stereotypes and Prejudices within the African culture, and now we're going to narrow it down to the Ghanaian culture. I have questions. Even before I go to the book, I have my own questions. Bishop. You see, one thing that I have a problem with is uh, that as soon as we become Christians, first thing we do is we take up a Jewish name. Even most of the Jewish names that we take have a Ghanaian version. We still want to stick to the Western one. So you find out that nobody wants to call themselves Yohani. They still want to stick to John. You know, I, 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 I don't okay. know. I mean, do you have to have the John or could we have used Yohani? Oh, uh, nothing at all. Oh, nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, that uh, this practice didn't start with Christ. It didn't start even after Christ. Jesus Christ was himself baptized. He didn't get any other name than that of Jesus. Funny enough, I've never thought of it like that. You know? <laughs> it's true. I've yeah. never thought of it like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, John baptized so many people. people. They, they didn't take any of their names. Mm -hmm. They kept their own names. Yeah. Uh, on Pentecost Day, Peter baptized 3,000 people, and this continued for, for centuries, three or three, four centuries, where you, you were baptized, Peter snapped on, and that's all. This idea of uh, imposing, as it were, a name of somebody because of baptism came much later on in Christianity. Uh, it, it doesn't form part of the essence of Christianity. Mm. Even now, even now, anybody can baptize his child without giving him or her so-called a Christian uh, name. And it doesn't make you more or less a Christian. No, you are, you are a Christian. Mm -hmm. You are baptized Peter Supper. <laughs> you are not, I'm not baptized. They gave me Peter. Sure. But I wasn't baptized Peter. I was, I, I was Peter Supper mm -hmm. when I was baptized. baptized. Okay. Okay. And most of the, 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 the or, or, originally, Many of the names were Jewish names mm -hmm. because Jesus himself was a Jew. Jew. He lived in. Uh, uh, later on, when the church spread to Europe, European names were, uh, came to be identified as names worthy of being Christian. given, uh, somebody being baptized. Yeah. Among these were, by the way, many, many Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Saint, Saint Monica was an African, St. Augustine was an African, St. Cyprian was an African, so on and so forth. St. Anthony, who is the, recognized as the father of monasticism, he was an African from Egypt, that is his name. So, so there were many Africans also, mm -hmm. many Europeans, and many <coughs> Chinese and uh, Japanese especially, and, and the Indians, okay. So that is one fact. You don't have to get a name of a Christian, uh, or, or, or of a, the, the name of a saint. Okay. Or, or a disciple, um, okay. So, uh, what, what was your the question was? You know, why, why do, I mean, even now, if you- So going, now, if, if somebody wants, if somebody, Wants to, baptize, wants to be baptized and is an adult, mm -hmm. you can say, I don't want the name apart from mine. No, no. Okay. And uh, if somebody wants to baptize his child, uh, he doesn't have to give him the child any name. Huh? Okay. On, on, and then, uh, yes. On, on the subject of baptism, mm -hmm. I want to move on to child naming. Yeah. Now you find out that now, traditionally, you know, adult a child maybe seven days, uh, the significance is that there should be a man to give the child a name so the family would meet and the father would say this is my child and I name him or her 
you know, this is the name. But we realize that now we want to do it in the church. We don't want to do it at home anymore. Uh, because you don't want to pour libation, so we now want to take it to, you know, take the child to a church and name the child in the church rather than the traditional. Let's meet in the house. Let me tell you what the name is. Pour our libation, and everybody says something good for the child. Honestly, I don't know this because it, it, this doesn't happen in the Catholic Church. I see. Mm. I see. Somebody, is, somebody gets a child, and the child is given mm-hmm. the name. This is. Uh, an imperative, from mm-hmm. a, a cultural imperative. Mm-hmm. You are born on a Sunday, the next Sunday you have to be given a name right. by your father. But the fact that you are born on a Sunday means, and you are a boy means you are a kwesi. Mm-hmm. And attached to a kwesi is the app- appellation Boduya. So you mm-hmm. are called a kwesi Boduya. So you are ma- your father, un- unless you are baptized, you are, you are Named, you are not a human being. We are a ho ho. Mm-hmm. You are a ho ho. Mm-hmm. You can go anytime. And if you went away without a name, you will be thrown on the incinerator. incinerator. Mm-hmm. So your father will name you. He doesn't do it himself, he does it through his sister, which means extended his family. family sister. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, in the ceremony, uh, two things are symbolized. You are going to be a human being. If you are not named, you are not a human being. In the human society, you have to have two virtues, two qualities. One is truthfulness. Uh, the, the, the officiant will put water on the baby's mm-hmm. tongue and say, when you say water, it is some water. The way they put it, it is water. It is water. Uh, if we say ensa, not ensa, when you say ensa, drink, some drink, it tastes ensa. Mm-hmm. The way they put it is very significant. Na en, who says you are na in you. You see, you can have two, uh, what do you call it? Untruths. Untruths. Mm-hmm. One is, you see this paper as white. This is white. Mm-hmm. You see it at white, but you tell your friend, oh, the, the paper lying on the table was red. That is one lie. That, mm-hmm. is, not a, that is a lie. It's untrue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's still a paper, but not the right color. It's not, it's not, it's not white. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But you say it is white. And you know it is not white. Mm-hmm. You know it is not red. You know it is not red. And you tell your friend, you say, but supposing just to tell you see it, and you see it as red. Eh? And you mm-hmm. t- tell your friend, the paper there was red. red. And you mean it, genuinely. Is that mm-hmm. a lie? <laughs> <laughs> so you, whatever you, you say believe. should be what, what you believe. Ah, no, not what you believe. Well, it must be what well, you know. What, what it is. You just don't go and say, oh, I saw uh, uh, red. When it was white, did you take time to find out whether it was white, red, or not? Uh huh. So these two types, uh, you know, the second type of untruth that causes so much problem in the world. We, 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 from from untruth, yeah. I want us to move to your book, yeah. and I'm talking about female circumcision, yes. which is something that uh, society frowns against it. Uh, and you've written about it. Yes. Is there a justification? Was it relevant at the time? Is it relevant now? Uh, should it be abolished? Uh, because you realize that it's the same women who, who you know, practice it. You know, it's not like men who take their daughters there. It's women who take their daughters to That's do it. That is the point. That is the point. And the, the, the key the point I want to make there is that non-Africans who notice this practice, call it female genital mutilation. You see? Uh-huh. And the word mutilation. Yeah, that's the word mutilation. Uh-huh. You can't come from outside and describe a custom as an outsider. 
you must ask yourself which society or uh, which uh, people are so wicked that they will institutionalize the mutilation of the adult's genitals. It cannot be. Whom society? And this practice is not only in one society, all across Africa. It is found also in Australia, among the aboriginals. Mm-hmm. It is found also in the Pacific Ocean, so on and so forth. It was found in America before the Europeans went there. <laughs> so it is not a question of female genital mutilation. It must, there must be some, something more significant mm-hmm. to it uh, than that. Mm-hmm. And the, the answer is very simple. Nobody talks about male genital mutilation. It's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We all get <laughs> mutilated one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> but in both cases, in both cases, some part of the genital is excised mm-hmm. in both cases. <laughs> but whereas the genital of the man lends itself to that excision, the genital of the woman doesn't lend itself easily. And that is what I have made people, uh, non-Africans or non-practitioners <laughs> of this thing, which is actually female circumcision and has nothing to do with female genital mutilation. Okay. So now, if you were to study the societies that do this and find out what they do it, why they do it, which, uh, as you, you yourself have, done, have said, there are some women in, uh, among the Nua, among the Mende in... Uh, in Siloun, among this and among this, who will take their daughters for that ceremony? Because in their, in their society, a woman, a man who doesn't have circumcision is not a man. Huh? There is a, what do you call it, secret society among the men there, for example. They take their boys and they put them into the bush for a ceremony that they call the that they call um, the women's ceremony is called Sunday. Mm-hmm. Huh? The men's ceremony I uh, have just forgotten. Mm-hmm. You are in the bush for at least three and nowadays they have shortened mm-hmm. the period. But you, you are in the bush for about in the past three years. Huh? And you come back, poro it is called. That ceremony is called poro. And you come and part of the poro is circumcision and the part of sunday which is the women's uh, poro is also circumcision now so the, you the, call the, this the, 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 the tribe always have their own reasons uh, why yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they, no, they no. believe in that yeah, and it's uh, not enforced upon uh, 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 <clears throat> you see after the ceremony you are like any other uh, uh, puberty right mm-hmm. Among the among the depot, uh, depot mm-hmm. among the Krobo mm-hmm. and Accra, even mm-hmm. it is only after the ceremony that you become marriageable, nubile. If you haven't done the ceremony and you marry or have sex, it is a terrible thing. Wow. Now, so the ceremony gives you access to marriage, mm-hmm. and there are certain difficulties in marriage. Hazards in marriage and so on. For the woman, the most obvious hazard is childbirth. And so during these ceremonies, they, they test the man and the woman. Are you ready? Are you prepared to take on the um, obligations of fatherhood or motherhood? Are you able to give birth? As simple as that. Mm-hmm. So. That is that we call it test of endurance. That leads you, give you the way to become married. Married, and if you fail that test, it's a, it's a, a ter- 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 terrible. Uh, Bishop, I want us to move to witchcraft and magical beliefs. Yes. Now, this is one thing which 
I find out, and as soon as they say anybody is a witch, the you know number one uh, is a woman, number two she's forty years and above, and number three she's most certainly poor. Yes. Then, uh, then you are tired. Probably she has not two of her teeth. <laughs> Then she's a witch, you know. Uh, but where do we get this? Uh, because, I, you know, I, I was, yeah, where, where, where did it come from? Where does it, oh, where you're bay for, this is a witch? Because See, it seemed to have just developed over... Oh, over the age. It's a kind of system to explain certain inexplicable occurrences in life. Hmm? You see, the world is full of mysteries. Your child dies. You are, you are, you are, you, you, you become, you are childish, you is terror. Uh, uh, you are, you are, your work doesn't succeed. You are, your business is not, a, doesn't, it's not successful, and so on and so forth. People want answers to these problems of life. Mm -hmm. Some people will say, oh, it is the, the will of God. Other people, but for our people, our people God will not visit anybody with a calamity like that. Mm -hmm. So it might be somebody else. Uh, uh, some people will say, oh, it is only chance. You don't know, it just happened. For some people, for our people, there's nothing like chance. Something must be done deliberately. Mm -hmm. And then for our people, then, the answers to, to some of these evils is witchcraft. It is the witch. Who, who is by nature essentially evil who causes these things. Why is it very less, you know, more, most of the time women and not men? The, the suspects. But, uh, I, uh, I agree with you, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, a man, a witch, a wizard, is dreaded. He is really dreaded. Uh, a woman which is not as dreaded as a man which, mm -hmm. but the women which just are many more than men witches. The reason why I hesitated a little was that I, I wanted to give an explanation. Namely, it is in, 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 but the explanation applies to only Akan people. Mm -hmm. In Akan society, the woman is the, the, the pivot of the... Well, let, let, me, let me help you with this. I mean, as a chief, any time I'm in a position, in front are the women, because yeah. they believe that they are mystical or powers, and that if anything evil is coming, they are able to take it more than the men. I don't you see, the society is built on women. Let's see. <laughs> The clan is based on the woman. Your father is only the husband of your mother. Mm -hmm. you, you, your mother owns you. I see. So the real power in uh, a Khan society uh, the belongs to the woman. woman. You see. And so it is the women who will cause things. Like, it is women who, out of jealousy, would cause these sort of problems for other women. I see. Uh, I see. Now, yeah. I want to move on to one stereotype that we have all lived with. Oh, these are northerners. We in Pepe for we feel slim, we are tiny, you know, and we hear it all the time. And it seems to create a divide, even though we are all one people and everybody has their strengths and weaknesses as tradition. Everywhere you go in the world, people have their strengths. But this north-south divide, I mean, who is a northerner and who is a southerner? That's what I said in the book. There is no northerner, there is no southerner. Mm -hmm. And this uh, uh, divide, polarization, is, is a lie. It's a lie. There is no position in Ghana which a, 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 a northerner has never held. From the presidency to the vice chancellor to this, what, what, what's the difference? Huh. What's the difference? Um, the fact that it's not, it's not, the, 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 the northerners, so-called northerners, are very happy in the south here. 
If I, if I take you to some places, it's all full of uh, Afram plains. Huh? There are 39 ethnic groups there. They are very happy there. So I don't know who planted the idea of north-south into the heads of, uh, of uh, the Ghanaians. Could it have been started through like maybe political gains? Uh, see, I, don't know the is, I don't know the history. No, yeah, the, the trouble is, uh, 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 the, the problem is, when you talk about the, 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 southern, the northerners being maltreated in the south, also, whoever goes to the north to collect people to, to come to the south, they come themselves, would they, would they be so willing and eager to come if indeed what people say they suffer is what is happening. Bishop, yeah. could, could it be because of the unfair distribution of wealth and that there's more wealth being distributed in the south than the north so they don't have a choice but to come to the south to also get benefit? Yeah. Long, long, long ago when the Europeans had not come there, the northerners were coming to the north. And if you get an, a, a, a southerner, I don't want to mention, mm -hmm. if you get an, a southerner to the north and, and put him on the land of the northerner, you will see what he will do. Huh? I, I, the, the, not long ago, the bishops held a meeting in, uh, in uh, Yendi. And on Sundays, we were asked to go to the villages around Yendi to see mass. And when I went to a village, I got a shock of my life. That village was so full of yam. And most of those people that have left that land to come to the south. I, 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 I couldn't understand. I told them, when we met, the, the, there's, there's still no yam now there, but we got the region, they call him, what do they call him? The regent. I told him. So go to Kumasi. Why should young boys and girls from Yendi be coming to Kumasi when you have this land? Mm -hmm. You have this land. So, well, it is a very difficult, for me, it's a very difficult mm -hmm. uh, thing to understand. If some, somebody goes there now from the south and he's serious, he can get millions billions of money okay. we're discussing from the book uh old <laughs> customs stereotypes and prejudices and one prejudice and stereotype which i think this side of the world the third world suffers uh, and you went through that because your father had five farms and he took you to farm so in this day and age you know your father would have been hove to dove suit to say you know <laughs> why are you taking your son <laughs> to, the, to the farm yeah. i mean so what, 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 what how do you speak to that that maybe right. it was too much, uh, the, the work on the farm was too tedious, you know, at, at, to, to send you there. Yes. Uh, you see, the, those who are doing, they don't understand the principle of division of labor. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the principle of division of labor is such that in all simple societies, I don't want to use the word primitive because there's no primitive society as such. Mm -hmm. In simple societies, Men have their chores, women have theirs, girls have their work to do, and boys have their work to do. <laughs> so you can't come from Europe and say, the boys are doing their job, you don't know, the, 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 you, have, you, don't, you haven't heard of the principle of division of labor, and you say, child labor, uh, child labor. Now, uh, normally, a child would follow the work of the mother if he's a girl mm -hmm. or the father if he's a, a boy. And so as I said uh, casually uh, in passing, when I was eight, seven, I used to go with my father to the fun. farm. We used to weed the farm, plant the seeds, weed the, around the... Um, the seedlings, mm -hmm. and then we have the father to pluck the cocoa, cocoa pods, mm -hmm. heap them together, get others around the, the villages to come and help us split open the cocoa and so. I, I used to go to, uh, to trapping. I, and you found uh, you found nothing wrong with that. No, and, and you turned out you know an exemplar, <laughs> exemplary citizen. But before, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Huh? 
uh, <laughs> that was a way of uh, educating our children. Okay. The, the other thing I want us to talk about is your urge to inculcate uh, being Ghanaian into being a Christian. Because you, tend, you find out that the church wants to separate Christianity and our traditions. Yes, I, so, think, I think it is very wrong. I'm, I'm the tradition, if I have no culture, I'm not a human being. My culture is what makes me what I am. Yeah. I am uh, a human being. So is the Dagao, uh, somebody, the Dagao. Mm -hmm. They call it, we call them Dagalis. They are not Dagati, they call themselves Dagao, mm -hmm. singular, and Dagaba, plural. Mm -hmm. I am a human being. So is the Dagao. But I am not the Dagao. No. And the Dagao is not me. Yes. This is all determined by my culture. Mm -hmm. The way I grew up, the grew, I grew up, the language I speak, the beliefs that I have, the tradition that I have uh, inherited, the linguistic tradition, the musical tradition, and so on. All these combine to make me what I am, mm -hmm. an Ashanti and not a Dagao. Okay. Part of the, part of the tradition is religious. Uh, mm -hmm. I am born into a religion, and I don't see what is wrong with that religion. It tells me that there is God, that he is kind, that he is, uh, that he is eternal, that he is just, that he is the creator of us all. What is the difference between this and what Christianity is saying? Exactly the same. So why should there be any difference uh, in approach? <laughs> why should you say Christianity against uh, culture? Christian, uh, um, religion is part of the culture. Otherwise, it's not a, it's not a religion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so people, when they talk like this, are thinking more of the externals. Huh? Mm -hmm. The externals. You kill a sheep. You see? Yeah. Sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice. Externals. Libation. Libation. <laughs> Libation. <laughs> and so, I don't see any problem with that. Well, thank you. Libation, man. for me, is a dramatized form of prayer. Mm -hmm. you, you direct your thoughts uh, to a higher being, uh, mostly spiritual, in whom you believe, in whom you believe. And so libation is saying that. Libation is telling you that there is or there are superior beings who are, who are spiritual, the ancestors. Does Christianity not say the same thing? We just talked about baptism. Uh -huh. And we take the names of who? Ancestors. Uh -huh. uh, Christianity is, uh, uh, libation is saying there are divinities. For so, some people. So basically we need to accept the plurality of religions. Yes. We, we, have to, we have to accept plurality of religions. Indeed, we have to. The, the problem is, it is the religions that have the book Mm -hmm. Islam and Christianity mm -hmm. that is caused that are causing all the problems. Bishop. They are intolerant. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I wish I could stay and talk all day. Uh, yeah. But the book is Old Customs, uh, Prejudices. Prejudices and Stereotypes. Uh, you need to get it and read it. It's insightful. Uh, it will teach you a lot. And then you stop asking me questions. Bishop, thank you so much. God bless you. It's God been bless interesting. You. It's been I've told you uh, that your grandfather was a great friend of mine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So I've become an official yeah. grandson today. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for watching PM Express Personality Profile, speaking to the Archbishop Emeritus Akwesi Sapo. My name is Nalan Sapo, and next Friday we'll be interviewing another personality. Thanks for watching.